Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes out as from Artist Circle. The opening track off their latest album, the entire album is incredible, yet this instrumental track manages to take the cake for me. We're going to be looking at the band Earthside from the 2023 album Let the Truth Speak, the opening track, but what if we're wrong, featuring sandbox percussion. Let's dive in and see what they're bringing to the table today. Yeah, so a nice 5-4 right here. Beautiful glockenspiel, kind of bouncing around and glistening everywhere. Love the modulation on the snare roll coming into this. Yeah, interesting. Our opening idea was two groups of five, but this is like two groups of three and a group of four. Still ten beats total for a phrase. But I love the way that they're changing up the phrasing of it. Move to a seven here. The glockenspiels are still present in the background, but not as much in the spotlight as they have been. This one really focusing on the guitars, although the glockenspiels are back, so. Carve out that space and refill it. <laughs> Cheeky little bass line. Ooh, the beauty, the wonder. A little harp in there too, we have some strings. Yeah. 
wonderful little track there. Uh, absolutely gorgeous, too. Uh, you know, we, we kick it off with the Glockenspiel, several of them. Um, it's kind of bouncing their sound all over the place, these little rhythmic melodies. Some of them a bit uh, tighter of a loop than others, like a one-bar idea. The other one's kind of existing on a larger idea. Two bars kind of gives it this, this duality of, of phrasing, where you can kind of feel that initial five-beat uh, bar that we have at the beginning of the song, but you can also feel the larger ten-beat phrasing that happens too, and you kind of get the duality of both of them simultaneously. To me, it sets a very small intimate yet vast feeling and I know that's contradictory small and vast how does that work but uh, to me it's like it's like the cosmos right the stars themselves especially here on earth you look up at the stars and they look so tiny and, and this is what the song reminds me of these little glistening stars right kind of peppering across the atmosphere but when you actually think about space and the vastness of it. It's that duality. The stars are so small, and yet there are so many of them. It just depends on scope, and that's what the beginning of this feels like. It sets up these really small ideas, but when you look past them and you look at the sounds, you realize how much space we have at the beginning of this song, how intimate and personal it already feels. And then the guitars come in and the drums come in. We fill up all that space and you get to actually feel how big this entire sound sphere is. And that's it right there. How big it is. We went from something that seemed small to actually getting the grand scope of it all. And actually seeing how vast of, you know, how much that space actually took up. Because just having those couple of instruments, it's a very empty sound sphere. What is the size of that emptiness? Well, now we know. And I just really love the contrast to, to that, both sides of it. The light um, and bouncy and, and small versus the full-on size, the weight of all of this beauty. And that's what the song bounces around between often here. It finds the contrast between the smaller sections and the larger ones. And I had mentioned the word beauty just a second ago, and I think that's certainly what this song is aiming for. I'm curious what the phrase is necessarily pertaining to the title of the song, but what if we're wrong? I was expecting something a bit more catastrophic in this track, and we never quite reached that. The song consistently felt gorgeous to me, in awe of something larger, a beauty, a natural beauty that was grander in scope than anything we can comprehend. It was, as I mentioned, awesome. Many sections in here feel, feel like being presented with visions of something indescribable completely beautiful we just lack the words for it more gorgeous than anything you've ever seen a lot of that i think comes from the harmonic elements the chord progressions themselves alluding to these really wide chords with uh, large uh, note intervals between them to showcase these very big gaps but i also think that it has to do with the timbre of it all it's the mix of the large meaty distorted guitars and the light twinkling of the glockenspiels it's the strings towards the end of the song and those quick harp runs it is beauty mixed with power and that is ultimately what i think the song really speaks to me about what is powerful beauty and to me that usually is going to have a third circle there to fill out uh, an expansion of this venn diagram which is elements of wonder and awe and how all of this coalesces into a, a single uh, feeling 
because we certainly do explore both of those, not just the awe, which I think is present in a majority of these sections, that feeling of, uh, you know, unspeakable beauty or knowledge, but also wonder. There's a couple of segments in here that just feel very curious. I think it was that first time we stripped the song back down to just the glockenspiels. We brought the harp in for the first time, I think. And this just felt very curious, wanting to know what was on the other side. Of course, this, as I spoke about earlier in contrast, expanded into this powerful beauty again. And that might have been the answer, too. What is on the other side? Oh, it is this, you know, unspeakable cosmic beauty. Just something you can't describe. But that is sort of my my take on a majority of this track. And it absolutely is gorgeous. I agree with Art of Circle, the requester. That I, I I don't know what the rest of the album sounds like. I'm going to assume it's very earth side, though it does not include the sandbox percussion group. But this song sets a very high standard for me, especially since it takes a sort of post metal element and combines it with this modern classical uh, harmonic element and the percussive palette that they use, all of these timbres that are probably not going to show up again on the album. And it's it's sort of unfortunate, for me at least, because I tend to enjoy metal mixed with other stuff. That's not to say I don't enjoy pure metal, but I always tend to enjoy when it mixes with things better. This probably would be my favorite song on the album too, and while I would try to be optimistic about it and say, yeah, it's a fantastic album and it has a killer opening, there would certainly be a part of me that says, I wish the whole album was like the intro. Now I say all that hypothetically, again, I haven't listened to the album, uh, so I, I can't definitively state that that's my opinion on it, but... We've listened to some Earthside before. I have a pretty good gist of who they are, and they showcased them themselves in here, but mixed with this other type of writing, compositionally and timbre-wise. And I really, really love what they're doing here. I don't even want more vocals. I just want Earthside and Sandbox Percussion to continue to collaborate on instrumentals because this was absolutely beautiful. Now, I think the last thing we need to speak about is time signature. And I've been trying to piece this together with everything else. The concept of uh, cosmic entity and, and being in the presence of cosmic entities. Having these feelings of elation and wonder and fascination and awe. The beauty of the, the raw power. How does all this relate to time? Why would they have chosen the time signatures they did because we kicked the song off in a 5-4 two bar phrase looking at 10 beats per idea we already sort of went over this some instruments work on just the five beats some work on the 10 and we get this cool little duality there between the longer and shorter riffs but once the guitars kick in we stick to the 5-4 time signature but we shift to a different phrasing. Instead of five and five, we now have three beats, three beats, and four beats. It creates a very different flow to it. Not only just that we have the shorter mini phrases within the larger idea, but also because we have three of these mini phrases rather than two. We've lost the symmetry of the entire concept. This is pushed even further as we move out of the five four into a seven Four. This extends the asymmetricality of it all. We never really divvy this up into anything that would be symmetrical. Much like the 5-4 is an odd number, but we work it in two-bar phrases to get 10, which is even. We don't really do that with the 7-4. The 7 is the phrase. It is asymmetrical throughout. What is the purpose of being put off kilter, even so far that once we bring in some of the more 
interesting drum flourishes in the final section. You may have noticed um, I like to do these these really low bounces when we return back to a beat one. Have a little bit of flourish, like three, four, five, six, seven, one, and kind of like feel the weight of the impact of the beginning of the phrase. And while I got that a majority of the time, usually I get it every time, unless there's a time shift somewhere. Maybe we change time signatures or feels or something like that. But I missed it a few times here because my understanding of the flow of the song was fundamentally altered by some of the interesting melodic things the drums are doing. To say that the ending makes the listener feel off kilter or imbalanced, I think would be an understatement. They do a fantastic job of doing it and not to pat myself on the back or toot my own horn too much, but I mean, it even threw me off multiple times. Um, and, you know, I go back and recount. I'm like, no, that's still seven. Just the drums did some cool polyrhythmic stuff and threw in some flourishing melodic drumming. And it all sounds great, but it certainly pulls us even further from that more symmetrical, understandable uh, rhythmic stuff that we had at the beginning of the song, which even that wasn't in 4-4. Four, four. It was in 5-4. It was still designed to be a little odd. They just worked the polyrhythmic ideas around in order to make it feel groovier. Here, it is still very groovy, but unsettling, off kilter. Why are they doing that? I don't know. I do think it fits within that realm of seeing something beyond knowledge. Not necessarily a cosmic horror, but simply cosmic beauty. Being t in, in a total sense of awe, your jaw fallen on the floor. You can't comprehend what you're seeing, but you're not terrorized by it either. It does shake your worldview, but you're in such beauty, all you can do is sob. The more that you look at it, the less sense it makes, and I think that's the purpose of the continuously shifting phrasing in this song. Moving from the two bars of five to the three, three, four to the seven, which I think the seven even has some changing phrasing in it too. We start off with a three and a four, but by the end of the song, we did utilize a four and a three. It's possible we had other changes in there too, which certainly would have made it confusing for me to follow along with it without actually counting out all the beats. And I think all of that comes together to paint that picture to see beyond the veil, to witness something mortals aren't supposed to. But it brings me back to my initial question. What does it have to do with the phrase, but what if we're wrong? And I don't know. There's a lot of things that that could pertain to. What if we're wrong about something and it's better that we're wrong about it. It brings beauty into the world because we were wrong. I really like that interpretation, but people are usually not using the phrase in that way. It's usually used as a cautionary tale. What if we're wrong and things go very poorly? We continue to do what we're doing, but we were wrong in our, um, in our philosophy and thus the execution ends up bringing catastrophe. I feel like the former is probably what they're going on about, but it's also, as I said, feels to be the lesser used uh, idea behind the phrase. And so, without lyrics, uh, I guess that wraps this up. I'm curious what everybody else's thoughts on this track are. What do you hear in this song? Which I suppose I probably should have asked earlier. Now you're probably influenced by what I said about it. <laughs> Um, but maybe you can think back to your first listen um, and how that might relate to the title. And does anything come to mind for you? Those are my thoughts, though. Give me yours. If you want to give me an answer to that question I just posed or just any general thoughts and opinions about this song, toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. 
All right, that wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, though. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of Royal Rumble. No, Random Rumble. <laughs> Pretty sure Royal Rumble is a WWF thing from, like, decades ago. Um, anyways, I just asked my patrons for suggestions with no connected theme or tissue between them, and we're just getting five random tracks this week. Figured that'd be a nice way to just uh, relax and chill out for uh, my last week before my biannual break. Alright, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.